Hello, and welcome to CBT Nuggets Mastering VMware View 5 and Preparing for the VCP 510-DT Exam. I'm Greg Shields. So you've, you've, you've mastered vSphere. You, you've got all of that whole virtualization, that hypervisor thing. You've got it nailed. You've got your servers virtualized at this point. You're actually getting pretty good with figuring out performance and capacity management with your server infrastructure. You got backups down. You, you really understand how the, the load balancing of DRS works and the, how the failover of high availability works. And you know what? You're thinking about moving into desktop virtualization. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, desktop virtualization these days is all the rage. Uh, but you may find, and I think you will, as we start working through this series, that the skills, the knowledge, and the experience that you have in mastering server virtualization are but a very small portion of what you need to be successful with desktop virtualization. That's why here at CBT Nuggets, we've actually created a completely separate series to talk about desktop virtualization in the frame of, uh, the frame of reference associated with VMware View. And this is VMware View 5. And while this series f talks about the VCP 510-DT exam, by no means do you need to be a type of person that's studying for an exam to get a lot of value out of this series. In fact, what you'll find here in this series is a lot of knowledge and information and hopefully a little personal experience that relate to deploying desktop virtualization and how the desktop virtualization story is that very much so the superset of what you would think in the server virtualization story. So why are we here? Obviously, you're here because, well, you're probably interested in desktop virtualization. You've probably seen some of, the, some of the great glossies, or you've probably seen some of the videos of different administrators who have maybe made their lives a little easier, or been better prepared for delivering desktops out to their users because they've made that move away from physical desktops and into virtual desktops. Maybe you've got some extra resources in your virtual environment that you want to deploy for a certain small scale use to just see if VMware View is something that's good for you. Well, this series is here not only for an exam, but to help you develop those skills in assisting and or in preparing for and installing, and configuring, and doing those ongoing maintenance tasks associated with VMware View. We'll spend a little time, too, talking about the, uh, the exam. And you'll notice that as we go through the different nuggets, I'll have a little bit of information down at the bottom of that initial screen that kind of gives you an idea about where this part of the storyline relates to the exam's storyline. But more than anything, I want to be able to spend a little uh, or ex share a little of my personal experiences and some of the best practices that I've learned over the years in being successful with desktop virtualization. Again, some of these best practices you may know because they relate to typical server virtualization and the stuff you've learned at this point. But some of them are actually useful in, as you've learned how to deal with perhaps terminal servers or remote desktop servers or those, uh, those individuals that are deploying physical computers. The skills that those individuals use flow well into what you need to be successful with VMware View. Also in this series, we're going to talk about, well, the certifications, or in this nugget, we're going to talk about the certifications. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the uh, intended audience, some of the stats associated with the exam, so you can prepare appropriately. And then I want to give you a series outline and prepare you for what we're about to see. The, so the exam objectives, they lay out in a certain path the knowledge that you need for, for, for passing that exam. But that path that's laid out for the exam is perhaps not the best path for actually learning how to use the product. And so I've really done a, a, I've done a lot of work, actually, in rearranging all of those objectives to align the entire learning experience here so that you can understand in a piecewise fashion how you slowly add in all of the other and additional pieces, laying them into place to create a complete, fully functional desktop virtualization environment. So it might not align with the exam objectives directly, but I think you'll see as we go through all of these 20 nuggets exactly why they've been lined up in the way that they have been. Now we've got a couple of things we have to talk about first, obviously, and that's just the certification process itself. This exam is part of the desktop virtualization half of VMware's certification sort of roadmap. 
And as you can see here, it is one in a series of, soon to be four actually, uh, certifications associated with desktop technologies. The first being these VMware Certified Associate, then the VMware Certified Professional and for version four and version five, and then eventually the VMware Certified Advanced Professional. This VCP510 DT exam is a core component of the VCP5 DT certification. You do have to have a VCP5 certification before you can certify for VCP5 DT. And the reason for that makes a lot of sense. You, in order to be successful with desktop virtualization, you have to know how vSphere works, and VCP5 tests you on vSphere. You will find in this series that I'm going to be making quite a few assumptions that you understand vSphere to the fullest. We will spend almost no time inside of vSphere doing configurations there. My assumption is that you've actually set up a vSphere environment, you have a functioning vSphere environment with which to work with, and you understand the basic concepts of vSphere to get yourself to the point where desktop virtualization makes sense. If you aren't to that point, I would highly recommend taking a look at the VCP5 exam series or the, the CBT Nuggets series associated with vSphere in version 5 uh, that is currently available on cbtnuggets.com. Because if you don't have those skills, well, we're going to go straight from that point way off in another direction. Now, this VCP5 DT certification is, an, is a requirement also for the VCAP DT or the Advanced Professional but it is not a requirement for the VMware Certified Design Expert certification. So as you can see, there's sort of an alignment here, starting with VCP and then moving down the road, the server path or the desktop path, for where, where your certification roadmap may lie. A lot of options there for you. Just like this series, the exam actually has an intended audience of individuals that have some experience already working with, well, not only VMware VUE, but also VMware vSphere. And this is actually coming straight out of the exam enablement guide, but uh, that blueprint suggests that a candidate for certification has about six to 12 months of experience working with VMware VUE. Uh, you are probably some IT infrastructure personnel. You are, have experience in installing, configuring, troubleshooting virtual infrastructure. You may have some understanding of VUE. Hopefully you will learn that over this series. You should be able to understand how to configure vSphere, including creating virtual machines and monitoring host resource use. I will add to that that you should understand all the, the, the basic setup requirements for setting up a vSphere environment. That includes networking, that includes storage, that includes servers, hosts, and even clusters. Because of the vSphere knowledge required, the candidate must have a VCP certification. I mentioned that earlier. And they suggest that a successful candidate will probably have other IT certifications that are out there. Most people are probably using VC or, or VMware VUE to deploy Microsoft Windows out to the people in your environment. And so having some Windows certifications can help. More importantly, though, having a recognition of the core skill set that's required in actually deploying Windows can be very handy for knowing how to deploy Windows in a virtual environment. There are a lot of the same sorts of tactics and strategies that you use in deploying Windows to physical computers that you do deploying them to virtual computers. That said, deploying them to virtual computers adds a whole other layer of additional skills that are required. But having that becomes a good foundation for your knowledge. Down here at the bottom, we have some exam stats associated with the, the VCP5 DT exam itself. The, the, it is an 85 question exam. Uh, the passing score is 300 using what is called a scaled scoring method from 100 to 500. And what that effectively means is that different people are, are going to get different kinds of exams or different sort of views of the exam content. Because there are 85 questions, there is a much larger pool of questions to pull from. Some questions are considered to be more difficult than others. And so that scaling, scaled scoring method ensures that if you get a whole bunch of hard questions and somebody else gets a whole bunch of less hard questions, well, then you're actually going to be e equally tested with those people depending on what they get. You've got 90 minutes to complete the exam. If uh, English is not your primary language, you'll have 120 minutes to complete the exam. And you can actually get that exam through pearsonview.com slash VMware. So that's where you'll sign up whenever it comes time to actually take the exam. Now I mentioned that this series really is going to spend a lot of time, the exam content is there, 
But really, the intent of this series is to help you become familiar with the product and familiar with how to configure it, set it up, get it running, manage it, operate it, and deal with its daily care and feeding. And so as you'll notice, this series outline spends a lot of time really stepping through all of the different items that are required to lay all of those pieces into place. You have to understand you know, what we're doing first, and then we start with our first view connection server. And then right there, we begin by building and provisioning our first virtual desktop. A lot of the early content focuses on some of the less optimized ways in which you can use desktop virtualization. And in fact, I'll step you through a couple of different approaches that you may probably not actually use in production. But by stepping you through some of these other approaches first, some of these more manual approaches, it'll give you a much better feeling for why the automated approaches are that much more powerful. And so we'll step through manual pools and automated pools with full VMs before we actually get to link clone VMs, which are very, very cool. We'll talk about the protocols, uh, how to uh, understand and configure RDP and PC over IP. We'll talk about offline VM with view transfer server and, a view, uh, and how to work with the view events database. And then I'll step back and talk a little bit about how you can fit or how you should fit desktop virtualization into your application delivery infrastructure. You know, delivering desktops is great, but in many ways, it's the applications that are important to your users and, and, and the data inside of those applications. And so I've spent a little bit of time there in nugget number 11, really helping you come to grips with where desktop virtualization and VDI fits into the greater application delivery messaging. With the academics out of the way, then we talk about actually how to create thin app virtual applications and then integrate those apps into VMware View. From there, then we take one more level or step up in the stack and then talk about user settings and how you can incorporate view persona management. We talk about printing and how to connect outside clients into your inside desktops using view security server. We talk about certificates. I give you a complete recipe for how to incorporate certificates into your view infrastructure as well as how to integrate that, those certificates in with any smart card infrastructure you may have. Uh, we could talk about uh, kiosk mode, a little bit about view roles and permissions, and then we finish out with a couple of troubleshooting topics uh, for the various components that make up that VMware view environment. So this is essentially the series outline, and these are the 20 nuggets that we'll spend time together with over you know, the, the next couple of hours, really. From there, we also have those exam objectives. And I'm listing them here in the, in the format that VMware provides and in the order VMware provides, just so you can get an understanding of what you need to know. VMware actually does a fairly decent job in their exam blueprint, which you can download from VMware.com, in really identifying the exact actions that are expected to, or the, the, the knowledge of those actions that is expected for you to be successful on the exam. And so for each objective, you will find a series of actions that you should know how to accomplish and you should be familiar with for you to be successful in testing against that objective. So understand what these objectives are. Understand what this second page of objectives is as well, but also recognize that those actions, it's, it's the things that you're doing inside of the interface that that exam is testing against. You will find as we go about the different nuggets in this series that I will list these objectives at the bottom of that initial screen when we, when we launch into each individual nugget. And the idea is that while the nugget is not necessarily there to give you the answers for the test questions, the nugget is there to align with certain objectives because that's the way it tends to make the most sense in transferring that knowledge over to you. So, so be, be aware of that. When we are creating this network, we are going to slowly be creating this entire CBT Nuggets network of a very large number of virtual machines. And I'll tell you what. I am operating the entirety of this infrastructure, so, so all of these machines, off of a, a, a uh, Intel Core i7, 2600K processor, so it's four CPUs with um, hyper-threading, so eight logical CPUs, 16 gigs of RAM, running on top of VMware Workstation version 8. So all of these machines are actually virtual machines. And not all of them are up at the same time, but actually we will get to the point where we have about four or five VMs running at a time. And inside of a couple of those VMs are additional nested virtual machines inside of the virtual machines. 
So you're going to need some hardware if you want to play along. That can be server hardware. That can be desktop hardware. One heavy, heavy record. <laughs>